but you want to make sure that you're putting the right stats on there. And I think at times only kind of an expert can tell you which ones are good and which ones are bad. And this is a great thing to add. And this is a thing that you should probably leave off. Okay, so today we're gonna cover highlight videos. Uh, these have become a very important part of the overall recruiting process. And Clint has been working with players and college coaches for years, and the highlight videos become very, very important. So what we wanna do here is we wanna break down the benefits of why you should have a highlight video, and then go into the different components that make up that highlight video, things you should do, and probably some things that you shouldn't be doing that are also very important, uh, because as we're gonna get into, there is a real purpose uh, and a point to having these. So we're gonna dive right into that. So what would you say the biggest benefits are to having a highlight video? I think number one is the number one tool that um, a player can use to initiate recruitment. It's something that you can get in front of a college coach quickly, easily, that can, um, that can spark interest in them so that they can start the recruiting process. Um, I also think it has some cool um, memorabilia type of things where you can kind of recap your season um, and enjoy with your team or just to kind of reflect. And it's also a kind of fun thing that you can put out there on social media and have fun with and, and, and you know uh, showcase your skill set um, to the masses. Okay, so it's obviously very important for a lot of different reasons. Uh, recruiting being a huge piece of that, which I think we're all interested in. So let's dive now into the video itself. You're okay. putting together a highlight video. Um, first and foremost, you had mentioned initiating the process with college coaches. But college coaches are busy, are busy, and you had talked about why the first 30 seconds are so important. Why is that? Well, you gotta understand that coaches get hundreds, if not thousands of these. They're all on social media platforms. They're emailed to them. Um, they're direct message to them. And so they've only got a certain amount of time. And so that first 30 sec that seconds has to capture their, uh, their attention. It's gotta make them go, wow, okay, I, I, I'm intrigued. I'm gonna take this 30 seconds and invest that three to seven minutes into watching the rest of the video. But I can promise you, if it doesn't capture their attention, if they watch it and they go, don't like the way the kid moves, don't like the way this feels, they're just gonna move on to the next one. Okay. So we know we gotta hook their attention that first 30 yep. seconds. What, what type of stuff do you wanna see in there? I think the, you know, one is something electric, something that can, whether it's an athletic play, you know, or, you know, a big time dunk, block shot, um, something that shows a little bit of athleticism and skill at your position. Um, maybe some type of, you know, big time jump shot or a game winner. Um, not necessarily like a half court shot. I mean, like something that 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 would go, wow, I'm, that was a big time play, and now I'm intrigued. And I'm again, I'm going to watch the next, you know, however long to see what what else they have to offer. Okay. So the goal of the first thirty seconds is to initially or basically get you to watch the rest of the video. Absolutely. Essentially. Okay. So there's different components that you had talked about putting in there. One of them was scoring in multiple ways. Everybody wants to get an offensive player that can score if it's possible. Yep. What do you mean by scoring in different ways? How do you show that? Well, oftentimes you'll watch a video and it'll just have a kid hitting a three and then another three and then another catch and shoot three and then another catch and shoot three. Whereas it's, it's really important to show, okay, I, I, I you know, hit a catch and shoot three, but okay, this one I've got off the dribble. This one I'm coming off a, off a screen. Um, this one I'm flaring back. Just different footwork, different aspects of being a scorer and a shooter. You know, one dribble pull up in the lane. You know, not just doing the same play over and over, um, but mixing it up, showing that you can score in different ways. And even if it's hitting threes, but hitting threes in different, you know, opportunities. Okay. And then as far as uh, finishing, you, you mentioned that college coaches, when we were talking, they like to see somebody finish. But you'd also mention their release point and I guess the context by which they're actually making these baskets. Sure. What is, what is a, a good type of finish and what would be a, I'm not going to say a bad finish, but maybe an irrelevant finish. Yeah. So I think coaches want to see, you know, when you're finishing, a, a good, you know, finish is one that's on balance, that's strong, that can finish in different points, you know, you know, on, you know, around the basket in different ways, but staying on balance with strength, you know, um, it's not bad to show one where, you know, you're getting knocked down and you're throwing it over your shoulder. Uh, but if you're watching college basketball, people aren't making those consistently. That's not like a real part of the game. 
Uh, it shows that maybe you had the concentration to finish one of those, but you may want to get one of those a season. Um, if you're always landing on the ground, you're always flopping on the ground, it shows almost a lack of strength, not a, not a, not a while I'm powering through and landing strong. You're still going to get the and one either way, but you don't got to flop on the ground to show that. Okay, so, so showing a, a consistent way of finishing, putting in a half-court shot is probably yes. not something a coach is going to run through an offense, so no. not very really relevant to your recruiting abilities. Yeah. Um, okay, so we got through the first 30 seconds. We have an idea of the type of plays that we're looking for. You had mentioned categories and, and sort of blocking things in and not necessarily going in chronological order, but showing maybe offensive plays and then maybe it's a ball handling plays. Describe that a little bit on what that means in terms of categorizing the plays that you would put into a highlight video. I think a lot of times when you're watching a film, you like you said, it, it you, you see the first game broken down, and then the second game broken down, and then and it can get a little methodical because you're not showing things kind of categorized. It's not the end all be all, but I think that a lot of coaches that I've talked to said it's great when it says you know, you know, shoot, you know perimeter jump shots, and you're showing some of those, and then you're shifting to distributing the ball if you're a point guard, um, and then it shifts to a another skill set, you know. Um, and on down, so it's a little bit more organized. Again, rather than just saying, here's my first game, and I'm watching my first game, and I'm cutting this up, and then going to the second game on down the line. Um, I think it just makes it easier for the coach to understand what's going on and follow along with what you're trying to show. Okay. Um, the other thing that we had talked about was this idea of game-winning plays and showing a couple of possessions of a player making a game-winning play, what does that mean? Game-winning plays are essentially those kind of tough, hard-nosed um, plays that you rarely ever see on a highlight film, but college coaches are searching for guys that are going to make those plays. So we're not talking a million clips here, but on a highlight film, you very rarely see somebody taking a charge or diving on a loose ball or, you know, making a big time, you know, get your chest out there and making a big time stop and then getting a deflection or whatnot. And again, you don't have to bombard your video with that, but it does show that you're willing to make those plays. And college coaches, they have to have that be a part of your game. You've got to be, they're looking for winners. And again, when you're thinking about a, a highlight film, you're just watching, you know, every great play and, and no mistakes. But this is another great play that you can add to that. Okay. Is there, is there a particular spot in the video those type of plays should go? Or is that its own category or does it matter? I think it doesn't matter. I mean, if you want to categorize it, um, as, as strange as it sounds, the fact that you're even considering putting those type of plays in there will impress a coach. The fact that they're going, listen, this kid, obviously, he values these plays. He's willing to put them in a highlight film, even though they may not be sexy. But the reality is, is that's what I want. That's what I want to find is the kid that's willing to do that. Um, so I, I, don't, I think that you can categorize it. And I think that's an important part of any video. You know, if you, if you want to mix in, you know, like I said, five or six of those type of clips. Okay. All right. So as far as what should be in there, first 30 seconds, make them electric, uh, get their attention so they'll move through. Uh, if you're showing scoring, make sure you're showing scoring in multiple ways, not just one way after another, after another, after another. Uh, finishing, meaning consistent plays that you can make, showing balance, strength, that mm -hmm. type of deal. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, Possessions of game-winning plays, show a couple of those. Toughness plays, taking charges, yep. making the extra pass, just things that will help your team win. We've got all those things. So if somebody's building a video, they put all those things together. Let's start talking about some of the some of the, the details and the finer points of how to put these things together. Okay. So the first question probably people are thinking is, how long should the video be? Depending on how much, um, you know, variety of game, how versatile your game is, well, I think determine a lot of that because it can be anywhere from, you don't want to make it much longer than seven minutes and you don't want to make it much shorter than three minutes. Um, but also you don't, like we just previously talked about, you don't want to show the same type of play over and over and over for seven minutes because mm -hmm. the coach will never get to that. If you're, if you show, um, you know, five clips of, or seven clips or 10 clips of, you know, one particular thing and then you're on to the next, um, I think that will create the length of what, you know, what is appropriate. But if you're finding yourself getting into the 10, 15 minute mark, it's too long. They're not going to watch all that. Okay. Unless they're really, really intrigued by what you're doing. And I would imagine the more versatile of a player you are, probably the longer it's going to end up being. Whereas if you're a 
if you're a three point specialist, and that's and that's what you've decided. That's all you're going to be. That's what you would focus on, but it wouldn't be as long. Whereas if you got a guy that can score, Absolutely. defend, be athletic, and do these different things, that's just going to extend the video. So there probably isn't a real like it has to be this specific, but it's a feel of the more diversity I can add in there, the longer it's probably going to end up being. Well, and you you spoke a little bit about positional, and you want to make sure you're highlighting what position that you play with some of those type of plays. You know, if you're a a pick and pop four man, you know you're showing some pick and pop shots, you're showing maybe some pick and roll shots based on your position, but Again, if you're a shooter, you don't want to just stand there and have a million shots. Put your three-point per, uh, shooting percentage on there and, and put on the, some great clips of you knocking down shots. And, and it's okay if you're a shooter. I mean, coaches are looking yeah. for shooters, but you don't need – he doesn't need 10 minutes of, of, of watching you shoot threes to get the gist that you can knock down threes. Okay. All right, that's good. The, now, this is, this is going to seem like a probably pretty obvious question, but why is it – so important to identify who you are in the video at the beginning before you even get into the video the last thing you want to do is frustrate whoever's watching that and if they're looking out there and they can't identify okay who am i if they can after three plays are going i still don't know exactly who i'm looking for here they're just gonna turn the video off and move on to the next player or move on to the next thing so you want to make this as easy as humanly possible on those coaches or on whoever the person is that's watching because the last thing you want to do is have somebody confused and they're like, well, I guess that kid's not very good or I really like that kid and it's not, it's not right. you. Right. So that's the importance is just making it clear so they know exactly what they're looking at. Okay. Make it clear, make it easy. E making it easy, like most things, is always going to make things a little smoother for the person doing it. So. Off the top of my head, I'm thinking, okay, so a picture of the player, so you have an idea of this is the kid I'm looking at, so if that's the first thing you see, you know who he is or who she is, uh, having their number, their jersey. Yep. Now, if you've got, if you're putting together a highlight video and say you're a, you're a girl that plays for your high school team, but then you also play spring and summer ball for an AAU team, and mm -hmm. maybe you have different jerseys, and then during school you're maroon, and during the summer you're orange, do you recommend showing different pictures of them or something like a, a spotlight a better way to go what what makes it easier when you're putting different stuff together which i think is great and i think it's great to have it in different settings as well whether it be the high school season the au season whatever um you want a picture of the person kind of maybe an action photo that's a simple action photo that shows the number in the face and highlight it but if you can put you know a circle around or something that highlights on each play just for a second and it doesn't even have, I've seen them where there's their pause for a second. It doesn't even have to be that. It just can be like, oh, I get it. There's a circle around this person for one half a second. That's who I'm looking at. Okay. Um, it makes it life a ton easier. All right. But again, the play should be about you. You should, if it's a highlight film, the play should be about you. Um, but you want it to be as clear and easy as possible. That makes sense. And, and we had talked a little bit about some other things that you should consider putting on there. So I'm, let me run through a few of these and then mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about deciding whether or not you should actually include them and, and where maybe some uh, some ex expertise or experience would be beneficial to somebody. So sure. when you open up your highlight video, you want to have on there things like your name, your jersey number, uh, the color of jersey that you're wearing. And then we talked about stats and putting the appropriate stats in there. Mm -hmm. What should they be including and, and are things they shouldn't be including? I think that, yes, obviously this video is kind of made to sell who you are and what you're about, right? So, you know, um, I think height's important. I think certain percentages are important. Um, they can help um, sell you as a player. Uh, but you want to make sure that you're putting the right stats on there. And I think at times only kind of an expert can tell you which ones are good and which ones are bad. And this is a great thing to add. And this is a thing that you should probably leave off. Um, so, I, I, again, I think that consulting with someone that really knows the game and knows what percentages a, a coach is going to get excited about is, is critical. Okay. And that probably includes GPA, ACT, yep. SAT, and the levels that they're trying to get to. Absolutely. Okay. I, I think that, in general, you want to give enough information that allows for those coaches to know more about you throughout your season, but you, don't, you, know, you want to make sure it's all positive stuff. Okay. All right. Um, the next question I think is actually important because we talked about making it easy for the coaches and making it as frictionless as possible because you want them to watch it. Somebody puts a recruiting video together, a highlight video, and they're ready to go. 
where should they put it? How should they get it to the coach to make it easy for them? And what should they not be doing? Well, I think, first of all, you want it to be, again, we've used the term easy as possible. So if you're using something like YouTube, that's something that pretty much everybody can get to. There's really very few, if any, ads on these. Um, and, and it's a kind of a, a, a format where everybody can get to. I mean, I've gone through a lot of highlight videos over the years, and if it's if it's on a huddle, you know, sometimes there's a lot of ads, or you need a password. If it's on, uh, what is it, N A N A N F H S, you know, sometimes you you need a password. You want it to be as easily formatted as humanly possible, so it's easy for these coaches to just point and click, and they get what they want. Um, so, you know, again, think of simplicity. Okay. Okay. So. As far as the details of the video, um, the length of the video really depends on how versatile you are and, and how many good highlights you have. Uh, identify yourself early, the very first thing, so they, it makes it easy for the coach to know who they're supposed to be looking at. Yep. You want to include uh, statistics and accolades and scholastics, but make sure you know what are good and what are not good to include, and uh, and then also make it easy for them to find. So YouTube's a great place to go. You might want to avoid Huddle and, and some of these others that might require a password or run two minutes of advertising beforehand. Uh, is there anything else that you think are worth mentioning on these highlight videos? No, I think that it, I'm, I'm a firm believer that any player that, um, is looking to get recruited should have something put together so that they've got the necessary tool to make it happen. Okay. All right. Well, that's good. There's a summary of, of uh, recruiting and highlight videos and their purpose and how to do them. Uh, I think what we'll try to do is include some examples as well. So check the notes. We'll see if we can find some links to it. some good examples that we found and uh, might be benefit to you to watch. Uh, thanks for checking it out and we'll have more information coming your way real soon.